right, welcome back to the Farm Life Show here at Seven Sons in Roanoke, Indiana. You're joined uh, by Blake and Blaine Hitsfield, part of the Seven Sons operation here. Blake, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. We, we actually... Um, I'm excited th- about today. It's going to be a fun topic. Yes, today's topic is, uh, what do the Seven Sons do? What are their different roles of the, the, the seven brothers here on the farm? So it, it, I've been wondering, what do you do? Yeah, I've been wondering the same thing about you. I'm joking. <laughs> The, the thing is here, um, and if you've been listening for a while, we've been doing these Farm Life shows. In the past, we've geared them more towards uh, speaking to our customers, but we noticed that we're getting a lot of listeners uh, from other farms uh, just engaging and asking questions about how we do what we do. So we'd really like to gear, especially today's podcast and future podcasts, for um, basically uh, giving, uh, d- basically helping other farms and, and sharing what we're doing at Seven Sons. Yep. And so we really invite our customers to listen in because I think – uh, when we approach it that way, we'll get to a lot of helpful details for other farms, um, and it'll be also that much more interesting for our customers to listen into these farmer-to-farmer conversations. Yep. So, all right. So, Blake, uh, other farms will ask all the time, what do all the seven brothers do? What are the different roles? Are and there even seven brothers? Are there even seven brothers? There there are, and we're all involved full-time. There are six uh, uh, daughter-in-laws, so yep. uh, six are married. There's 14 grandkids. It's a full house. It's a full house, and uh, we all have separate houses. But um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're having a good time, and it's it's working well. And one of the reasons it works well is because there's a lot of diverse opportunities and jobs here on this farm because we're just not a farm. Um, we are taking our farm production all the way up through the value chain to an end consumer to bring value to them. And so that just brings a lot of diverse opportunities and jobs, and that's really yeah. important. That's what agriculture is really missing is that diversity uh, of jobs because you know the, the the farms are not passing to the next generation anymore um and, and the reality is it's really hard for far, you know the old farmer to get out and the new farmer to get in um yep. and and there may not be of interest uh for the next generation as well but just because of a, a lack of diversity of what's going on on the farm. So. Yeah, because, I mean, most people think if you're going to be a farmer, you got to be able to just drive a tractor, right? Yeah, drive or, a tractor. No, there's far more than that, one, to farming. But also, if you're working with uh, customers yep. and building a direct marketing business and a food hub, there's lots of, of different skill sets that are needed for that. So. Yep. So. All right, so, Blake, let's just dive right in. So, okay. you're the oldest. Let's start from oldest to youngest. Uh, what is your role here at Seven Sons? So, uh, my role is going to be on the production side. So, I love being outside. I love working with animals. I love taking care of the animals and managing just our pasture land. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to be taking care of the the cattle, the hogs, um, uh, helping Bruce with the chickens, uh, the sheep that we have. So, anything that has to do with um, outside activity. I'm going to be there. Yep. So um, that's where my, my, my desire zone, my passion zone, it motivates me. Um, so I love the team that we have outside. I love working alongside of them. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do um, every day and it gets me out of bed. And um, yeah, I also help out with our producer um, network. We have 20 to 30 other farms that are a huge part of what we do and providing a, a, a more product for our customers. So um, I get to go and visit their farms. I get to do pasture walks with them and schools and bring in speakers. And uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's motivating to me. So Well, and a key word you said there uh, that's worth mentioning and coming back to is it's this kind of work is in your desire zone. So yes. what do we mean by that? So at, at Seven Sons, we talk about you know, if we're, if we feel like we're skilled at something and we love doing it, that meets the criteria of our desire zone. It's, it's actually a concept taught by uh, Michael Hyatt, who's a business coach. And what yep. you want to avoid doing in life is ending up in jobs or in work or in careers where you may not really have a knack for it. You just ended up there for some reason, or, uh, or it's something that you don't enjoy. That's considered your, your drudgery zone. Yeah. You want to, you want to minimize the amount of work that you're doing in any career or, or, or job. Uh, and sometimes it's just rearranging your, your, your schedule and saying no to a few things and delegating those things, um, to get you back in that desire zone where you're really super, you're really good at it and you love doing it. So we go through that process probably every year, every year we ask those questions. Are we doing the work activities that have kind of crept into our, our, our work here on the farm? Does it fit our desire zone? And that's, that applies to anyone listening, whether you are running a farm, 
a business or uh, you have your in your career, yep. um, uh, you know, are you how much of your time is spent in that desire zone? You're good at it uh, and you really enjoy it. So you're really good at those. Pro- there's, if there's ever a big project going on outside, like you're always at the heart of it and making sure it gets done, just knocking it out. So doing my best. Yep. Well, so that's what I do. Blaine, what do you do? So I'm uh, I'm second oldest. So uh, in, in high school, I always had a keen interest in all, you know, marketing and yep. uh, uh, multimedia and design, a little bit of the creative side um, in me. And so um, in high school, I was actually designing websites and doing, you know, just some basic marketing work for some small businesses and companies uh, in the Fort Wayne area. So I really enjoyed that. And as kind of our farm started to take off, we started having a, a, a customer base and a direct marketing business and an opportunity to grow that. Um, I really was excited about the opportunity to, to take my the things that I really enjoyed and I felt like I was learning and getting good at and applying them here at Seven Suns. So my job, so your job, one of your jobs is make sure we have product that yeah. you know, that's coming down the pipeline here at our farm um, and raising the animals. And then my job is make sure that we have a home for those those animals and for the product yep. uh, so, and keep those things uh, hopefully in balance, which we'll talk about later because a few other brothers help out. Uh, with those two aspects as well. So that's what I do is, yep. is handling the customers, marketing, and I really, really, it's really rewarding to uh, to be able to work with so many customers and connect with them and build that trust and tell the story of what we're doing here, our, our mission and our passion, what regenerative agriculture is and, and the effect that our customers' decisions uh, and that vote they're making to support regenerative agriculture, what it means for our farm, um, and you know just what regenerative agriculture can do uh, in general. So, Blaine, that's a great example of just two of you two, you and me, we're, we're so opposite when it comes yeah. to this. I mean, because what you described, I don't, enjoy doing mm-hmm. but i'm so closely tied to the effect of what you do so like if i yeah. produce it and you you sell it you know if, if you're not doing your role in excelling and yeah. um, knocking it out of the park then the model breaks and yeah. i you know i could try to do it myself and i would i would give it my best shot but i'm not going to be efficient at it and it's going to be in my drudgery zone and i'm just not gonna i'm not gonna be happy with life too yeah so i'm gonna carry that stress home with me too <laughs> yep Yep. So one of the things we talk about um, at Seven Sons and remind ourselves is that there's a quote, I forget where we read it, but it, it goes like this, know what you know, know what you don't know, and know who knows what you don't. So that's a perfect per- perfect philosophy when, yep. when doing business and building a team or working with a family. Um, let's figure out what we do well, what we don't do well, recognize it, call it for what it is, and make sure we're plugging those holes. Um, so that, it's it's fun when thanks when for doing happening. what you do blaine oh. yep oh. um all right so who is next uh bryce, hey, bryce. Yep. yeah okay you want to share what bryce does here so bryce has started out with uh working with the the lane hens on our farm so he kind of you actually you did that a little bit as well and yep. i did it we just kind of pass up a ton down and it was a great start for uh for for us getting started so bryce took that and really um really developed that and grew it from where we left off and has done a great job he's really passionate about poultry and uh, achieving the efficiencies of, of new designs and he's really creative um, mm-hmm. so a lot of the uh, equipment that we use is very specific to our industry now um, so there's a lot of great innovations in the commercial world but you can't take those all and apply them to a pasture-based system so we kind of kind of adapt and, and design new things and that's where Bryce has really excelled in that area and just he he's passionate about that we talk about passion that's where he's passionate so mm-hmm. um, so some of the things that are um, just crucial to our lane hen operation are our rollout nest box. Um, that way we have clean eggs. Bryce uh, done a lot to design that and tweak that and make that even better. And um, just some other things that uh, with the buildings, for example, uh, that we actually keep the hens in and move them uh, out in pasture. Bryce has developed those and um, continues to tweak them. Yeah, well. so he came up with those designs and really helped with the engineering process, partnered with a local manufacturer to build yeah. uh, this equipment that's specifically geared for a, a small-scale pasture-based mobile uh, poultry farm operation, um, hen operation. And so, um, and so now he does that full-time now. It's actually a business. There right? are hundreds of farms yeah. that have the same equipment that we have here at Seven Sons that he's helped set up, not only with the tools, but also the coaching of, okay, 
here's how to run a successful lane hen business and here's the, the critical tools. So yep. he, that business is called Hen Gear, hengear.com. And, and for farmers listening, you can go there and see all the different things that he, that he has uh, uh, come up with. And there's lots of videos that explain the innovations uh, that come along with the tools. He came up with so, a heat mat, lane to keep eggs from freezing. freezing. I mean, yep. you know, that was always something you and I talked about. Like, how are we going to keep these eggs? We got to gather twice a day and things like that. There's an auto <laughs> roost opener system that works off of a solar power and a timer that opens the the, the uh, nest box so the hens can go in yep. in the morning. So lots of cool things there. So check out uh, what he's doing at hengear.com. And and next in line would be Brock. Brock. Yeah. Brock. So Brock, I'll I'll explain kind of what Brock's doing and what his role is uh, because I work close with him in the, the marketing and distribution side. So Brock works with, with us real close. Um, he's our design lead and really he's he's really leading up the branding um, and the design work here at Seven Sun. So a couple things, the box, the actual delivery box, he's helped out with that. So design on that. Uh, uh, any uh, label that you see around here or a pam- pamphlet or a brochure or a video. Um, actually, wh- if you're watching this on YouTube, yep. he was the one that edited that. You'll see the intro that came in uh, be- before this started. He's, he's 100% responsible for that. Very yep. creative. And uh, there's always, he's also very, he's, he works hard because we have so many projects coming on the pipeline um, at him. Yeah, on our Monday morning meetings, uh, we kind of talk about the things that's coming down for the week and what we need done. And Brock's name's thrown up quite a bit. Yep. So anything uh, design, creative, uh, he is behind that. Uh, so you go to our website. Uh, he'll design the website pages. Yep. Um, so very in tune to that. Very good at it. Um, he's got a creative mind. It just has an eye for uh, for design and branding. So uh, it's fun to have him uh, right alongside me in the, the marketing operation. So. Yep. So that is Brock. Who's next? Brooks, Brooks would be next. So Brooks would you be want to share with Brooks? You work alongside him as well. I do. I work very close with Brooks. So he started... I mean, when he started out of high school here on the farm, he was helping filling orders, working in the office. Uh, customer service. Customer service, yes. Um, wonderful job at that. But where he really started to excel was in the area of, of technical problem solving. So one of the projects that we uh, worked on early on, this probably started six years ago, is we started developing and worked with uh, some engineers to develop our own e-commerce technology, our own e-commerce system, because we had some we had some serious problems that we were running up against trying to sell food and work and, and make it a smooth process for customers to buy meat products online. You have things like variable weights. We had yep. pickup locations where people could choose where to pick up at at different times. Well, buying from a farm is, is inconvenient period. Almost. Yeah, it was, it's a kind of a logistical thing you got to jump through. And so we wanted to develop a website system that was easy for our customers to use. And we had other farms. Once we developed that, we had other farms that wanted to, to use the same website system. So uh, we actually developed uh, that into a, another business called Gray's Cart, and Brooks runs that business today. And there is over 450 other farms like Seven Sons uh, that use that to serve thousands and thousands of customers. So if you go to sevensons.net, um, you, that's our website, but everything that you see there is ran by the Gray's Cart e commerce system that's been developed. So he does an incredible job running that bit and there's a team behind it there's two yep. very talented engineers uh, behind the scenes and he's so he's working on product development related to gray's car and helping us continue to solve problems uh, at seven suns and make a better experience for our customers one a prime example of this is is a project that brooks came up with and champion was the subscribe and save project so that customers could easily with the click of a button put their orders on repeat and choose their frequency schedule. And uh, that was a massive project. Yep, it was. And he did an awesome job. And now we just rolled that out so that other farms can also uh, use that technology and offer that um, convenience for their customers um, as well for other farms. So anyways, super proud of Brooks. He's awesome at what he does. So Yep. I don't even begin to try to understand what he does. Yes. <laughs> yep. Very technical. Um, and so next would be Bruce. You want to share about Bruce? Bruce. Yes. So Bruce is now kind of take the baton from Bryce on the lane hens as far as the, the day-to-day operations of those. Uh, Bruce and I work closely together on the farm because we're coordinating uh, pasture moves and things like that. But from the actual running of the the business of the hens, that falls on Bruce's shoulders. So Bruce is uh, very good with the details. And if you've ever raised lane hens before, you know that uh, every detail matters. Um, If the light changes a little bit, you see the result of that, or positive or negative, depending on how it goes, um, in in the late rate. So um, he's very good with that. Um, He has a great team outside uh, alongside with him. 
And uh, one thing I'm really uh, just proud of Bruce is, is the fact that he's been able to year over year make changes to increase our lay rate, um, the egg lay rate uh, out on pasture. And if there's one thing that has kind of plagued um, the pasture laying hen model is the um, the inability to achieve a good lay rate, a high percentage lay rate. So the industry standards, they're going to be over 90%, well over 90% for yep. the entire year. Yep. And um, for most farms, and we've been there, it's in that 50 to 75%. Um, but Bruce has been able to get it up to 80 plus percent for the year and blame the amount of uh, profit difference between, you know, 70% and 80%. Mm-hmm. Um, is it's whether or not the, it, it, the, uh, it's economic or not yeah. to have hens on your farm is in that lay rates for customers listening. That's how many eggs the, the, the hen lays each year. Yep. And really, it's just about making sure the hen health is optimized, that they're comfortable, you know, they have plenty of shade, plenty of water, access to the non-GMO feed, just really designing the amenities around making their life awesome. Yep. They lay more eggs, and yep. that's much better. And, and, and you're right, it's been a struggle for other pasture-based farms we talked to that said, listen, I don't know if I can keep doing this because the economics just don't work. The profit doesn't work out. Um, it's not profitable. And, so, and for us, it's one of our best uh, best enterprises that we have. Yes, and Bruce has done a great, a great job with that. And he's really grown the lane hen uh, uh, side of the, the farm. I think, I forget how many hens we had when he took over, but he has close to 14,000 hens. He's probably easily doubled it. Yes. Um, and part of that doubling, he, he worked really close as we brought on Whole Foods. So our eggs are now available in over, a, I think, close to 100 Whole Foods uh, stores. So that's a big project that, um, and he, he still manages and takes care of. So he does, does, does an awesome a job, job, incredibly yep. detailed and technical, perfect fit for that position. So in that role, yep. so that was Bruce speaking of details. Yeah. So another very, uh, detail oriented role is Brant. So Brant last but not least, uh, Brant is the youngest. He's 22. He um, and, uh, he joined, uh, the farm full time, right in high school, right after high school, yep. Um, and very detail oriented. He started similar to the way Brooks did, starting packing orders in the warehouse um, and making sure we're getting all the products and, and orders out to customers on time. Uh, but he's really gravitated, being such a technical mind, he's uh, and detail oriented mind. He's gravitated towards uh, his role as supply chain manager, which basically means he is building all kinds of spreadsheets so that we're monitoring. Uh, you know, which products are selling and which, uh, which products customers are demanding. And then he's making sure that he's working with you closely to make sure yep. that that's matching the animals we have on the farm and working with the other uh, producers that we have, making sure that all that stays in balance. He has some, some huge spreadsheets uh, that take, you know, uh, 20 seconds to load when you bring it up on the computer. Uh, and he puts those, he puts those nerdy glasses on as he sits in front of the computer. <laughs> yep, he does. He just fits the, uh, the, the stereo, stereotypical uh, uh, nerd in behind the computer. And he loves it. He embraces it. He does. And he's really, really good at it. So. Yep. So that's all seven of us, Blaine. What about mom and dad? Where do they fit into this picture? So because you, our if, farm has grown over the years. Yeah. So if you look at the team page, uh, their title is Visionary Founders, and that's exactly what they've been. They uh, uh, really um, made the initial sacrifices, had that initial vision uh, for uh, turning our conventional farming operation and into uh, a regenerative farm. And uh, it's really neat to see what they started with yeah. and the sacrifice they made and the willingness for allow, for allowing us to come on board in the business um, and gave us responsibilities, decision-making um, opportunities, uh, an opportunity to grow it uh, to what it is today. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you, do you have anything else to say about the, the really the, the commitment level they had early on. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's inspiring. Um, and I look up to them a lot for just the, the willingness to make a commitment out of conviction of this is the direction we want to take our farm, no matter if it's profitable or not right away. Obviously, you know, you it has to be profitable at some point, but they believed in it. You know, they, I remember, I remember when we sold all the, our conventional hogs, Blaine, we were wondering, is this the right thing to do? And mom and dad said, if we're going to do this, we're going to make the change. Yeah. It was kind of that, that moment of burning the ships and yeah. not turning back. And it definitely, this was, would have been uh, mid nineties when they had that vision and, and uh, decided to go this direction. And, you know, there wasn't the, uh, there wasn't a demand, a consumer demand for pasture raised or grass fed products. As a matter of fact, we weren't even very familiar with the terms, they just knew this is the type of agriculture we want to be involved in. We would be regenerating uh, the soil and improving the environment, improving the, uh, the welfare of our animals here on the farm, and hopefully have an opportunity for future generations. And that's exactly what happened. 
uh, but wouldn't happen if they didn't have that initial vision and a willingness to uh, to make that sacrifice and leap of faith. So couldn't be more thankful yep. uh, to mom and dad and their role over the years. So that's it. That's all of us. That answers the questions. What do the seven brothers do at Seven Sons Farm? So you have an idea of uh, what everyone's doing, how it all works together. And uh, we're having a, a good time. Uh, we're really enjoying it. And we really appreciate uh, the support from our customers supporting this mission and seeing it grow.